Welcome to Hetzner Tech Talk. Today we are going to show you how to rebuild a Linux software RAID after replacing a faulty disk. Drives, like any other component of a server system, are subject to wear and tear. To prevent data loss in the event of defect, all default installations are set up using RAID 1 to provide the necessary redundancy. And while most customers will never experience a drive failure during their rental period, every system administrator should be familiar with the procedures involved. So let's start by checking the health of our RAID. We can see that the arrays are currently healthy and up to date, as indicated by the two U's in the square brackets. You can also see the partitions from which each array is assembled, as well as the size and the metadata version. If a drive fails, the output changes. In most cases, the defective components will have been automatically removed by the kernel, and so they will be missing from the output of ProcMD stand. As we can see in this case, the second drive has failed. Before asking technical support for a replacement, we need to determine the serial number of the surviving drive. For example, using HDPARM or SmartCDL. After the drive has been replaced, we need to duplicate the partition table from the surviving drive onto the new drive. The tool we need to use depends on the type of partition table. In general, drives larger than 2TB will use GPT. To find out, we are going to check the partition table in the master boot record using SFDisk. If GPT is used, any recent FDisk should output a warning and recommend the use of Gparted instead. In any case, the partition table will only contain a protective single partition of the GPT type. In our case we have MSDAS, so we can directly use SFDisk to copy the partition table. Since this tool is from the MS-DOS era, older versions might still think that partitions have to start at cylinder boundaries. Here we just add the force options to make SFDisk write the partition table onto the new disk. For a system using GPT, we have to use SGDisk instead. A word of warning, the order in which the drives must be listed is reversed, with the target drive first and the source drive last. Now that we have copied our partition table onto the new disk, we can start rebuilding our RAID by adding the corresponding partitions to each RAID array. If you are unsure, check the output of ProgMD style once more. Here in our case we start by adding SDB1 to MD0 using the MDADM tool. That worked, so let's rebuild the other two arrays. Now we can check the output of program DSTAR once more to see that the arrays have started their recovery process. Once the arrays have completed their rebuild, we can finish our repairs by installing the bootloader onto the new disk. For more tips and tricks, please visit wiki.hetzner.de. Thanks for watching.